a JS developer is much more important than a CS developer, if there is such a thing, uh, or a CS developer is better than it. So there's like a, a hierarchical system. Stop making these huge barriers between people who are real, real developers and not real. <laughs> Your background in development is quite unique in that you didn't come from a traditional computer science background, you did like philosophy. Um, so how did you actually get into development? Like I've been interested in computers from a young age and I first started um, HTML and CSS on like um, Neopets, which is like a um, kid site where you look after like a virtual animal. Okay. And you can make your own like um, desktop, not, not desktop, sorry, website on there. So I made that and forgot about it for a long time after that. When I got to university, things like Code Academy and other like online um, courses started coming out. But it was Code Academy I was introduced to by a friend. And then my final year, I heard about boot camps, and I get got like lost interest in the other things I was pursuing. So I thought, yeah, I'll give it a proper try and applied for one and got in. So what does a boot camp entail? Is that like a, an intensive course or? Pretty much, yeah. For us, it meant that we worked in groups of four for sixteen weeks on different projects. So starting off simple was something like making a um, blogging framework yeah, and then building up to using APIs and other frameworks like React. And how did you find like just the logic of computer science? Because I mean, I understood algebra a bit. That's the only thing with mathematics that made sense, which is weird. And then I did art, so it was kind of weird that I became a web designer kind of cryptically or UX designer. I mean, how did you feel like from the background of like philosophy, which you studied? Um, I think philosophy did help a bit because it helps you to understand how to break things down. So with me, like maybe I want to learn, understand how to use React, and it's like you need to understand all these things in order to understand React, and I understood that it's a journey, whereas some people are like, oh, I looked at React, I didn't get it, and so I'm just never going to understand. And it's like if you look at like Kant like that, then you're never going to understand Kant. So yeah. it's like helped me to break things down, but like I didn't do quite very well at logic like in first year, so people often think, oh, you did logic, so you'll be good at it, but yeah, I don't know. Was it 12 weeks, the course that you did? or how 16, yeah. 16. So, I mean, was there a moment there when you think, aha, okay, now it makes sense? Or is that, like, not necessarily how it works? <laughs> it was like a billion aha moments, I would say. Oh. Like, <laughs> yeah, I remember callbacks very clearly because that was one of the ones where we were all stuck for a while and then it eventually made sense in one day. But lots of times it's like, <laughs> you get to the point where you're, like, dreaming about coding. So <laughs> thinking about all the videos you've been watching and hearing, like, the theme tunes of different <laughs> videos in your head, like, so you li you're living and breathing it, so it's like a lot easier for those aha moments to happen. What was the most challenging thing to, to figure out then? I think for me, the first time I tried to understand how an API works, so like calling something and then bringing it into the front end was really difficult for me to wrap my head around. But it was mostly repetition. Like even there's projects after the bootcamp that I did. So um, the projects stage helped a lot with like reinforcing things, but during the bootcamp I was like, I'm never going to understand this. Yeah. And it's just like, arcane knowledge that's just really too difficult for me. So it was difficult. I think even more than the technology, it was more, there, there can be things that are too hard for you now, but if you keep trying, eventually sometimes you'll get them. So yeah. yeah. The framework is actually starts uh, limiting what you're, you're trying to do because it's like this big black box of stuff that you don't know what's going in there. You don't understand, like when it comes to performance, why something's not happening. I mean, is there, I mean, how do you feel, or what are your feelings about frameworks in general. I do feel a lot like that, like with React, obviously I'm still quite junior, like coming up to two and a half years now, but I couldn't tell you how like React works internally. And yeah. I do worry about things like that, like people often say things are too magical. And I think if you started off learning React and you understood React, you understood how to use React, then maybe you would, you, well, you would definitely miss all the fundamentals of like JavaScript. It's better than something like Angular where you are just like putting elements into your HTML. And I think things can be a lot less transparent, like you're doing things in a very Angular way. Whereas at least React lets you do things in a very JavaScript way. But yeah, I think it's easy to, when you use the framework, to get lost in like framework specific stuff. But then I suppose the, the other thing is you're otherwise forced to write everything in vanilla JS, which, yes, which requires <laughs> you to know a lot of stuff. So it's almost like, you know, um, which way to go. I mean, uh, some of the, the, the folks at work we were talking about, like some of the tools which are adopted by the community are often not necessarily the best technically ones, but they're the most approachable. So it's yeah. like WordPress took off because it was like the one click install. So loads of designers use WordPress or jQuery made things easier. Yeah. Um, do you do you think that is like the future of like tools which are just make the jobs easier for developers or um, how do you think developers should approach it? I think it's annoying because the gap is always going to be there because obviously, well, there's the whole scoffing over PHP in sort of in the developer community. It's not very nice, but um, people, there's the drag and drop, Squarespace, WordPress sort of 
um, very simple development world, and then there's a world of real development where people are doing like more, like I don't know, JavaScript, Ruby, that kind of out, not out of the box sort of solution. And I think it's more about bridging the gap because I feel like often people will start off with something that, especially if they want to get into development, maybe they'll start off with a WordPress site, and then they realise they need to edit it in some way that WordPress.com can't let them do. Yeah. And then often give up because they didn't realise that it's going to be a whole thing <laughs> to yeah. get from there to WordPress.org sort of like them that um, figure by themselves sort of site. So I don't know. I'm not sure if development will go that way because I think in a way it's trying to differentiate itself, differentiate itself. So it doesn't end up like, you know, AI taking over our jobs and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's, it's difficult. I hear conversations about like PHP or people just doing HTML and they're not real developers. There does seem a bit of condescension between what the real developer does and the fake developer uses uh, frameworks and libraries. And there seems to be, I don't know, something to do with ethics. And I know you did philosophy. So. Yeah. And what do you think about that attitude? I think gatekeeping is a big issue in coding. Like, I don't know if it's to protect people's salaries or their perceived place in like the technological world, but it seems like people love to just grind other people down and to like make sure they seem better than others. So, I mean, how do we actually challenge that kind of uh, uh, I don't know, elitist attitude? Because it is development. Like, if someone's using WordPress, okay, they're not coding everything, but it's still, you know, what they're creating is still a real thing. I mean, I don't really. I mean, we have this in the design world, like real designers use blah, or real designers do X. And it just seems like very like strange, arbitrary rules set yeah. up to, again, like very protectionist. I and mean, how do we break those barriers? I think a lot of time it's um, like elevating things that are seen as easy. Because like HTML and CSS, people, I, people can argue about HTML, but accessibility is a big issue. And lots of people don't do it very well. Yeah. So HTML in itself can be a job if people wanted it to be. CSS. People like to joke that CSS is a bad API and all this kind of stuff, but at the end of the day, it's very difficult to do it very well. And yeah. so HTML and CSS developers should be hired alongside a DS developer. Like it shouldn't be a strange role. Yeah. And just like not devaluing the work that people do would be a good start. Why do you think people do that? Is it just again the, the protectionist attitude of they want to be seen as much more important? So a JS developer is much more important than a CS developer if there is such a thing, uh, or a CS developer better than it. So there's like a, a hierarchical system. Yeah. I think in a way it's protecting themselves because a lot of people have done Comsky and doing computer science means that you've learned a certain amount of things. You wouldn't have concentrated on HTML and CSS and JS yeah. if you did that. So it makes more sense to be like, oh yes, Java is the best, the most powerful language when that was what you learned and that's what you're good at. Yeah. So I think it is a lot of gatekeeping to protect themselves. Um, and you've worked on a project called Wildcard JS. Yes. Could you talk a bit more about that? Yeah, it's for people who are um, of underrepresented genders. We're having our first hackathon soon. Um, well, hack day, I should say, really. But yeah. What's that going to entail then? Um, I just want people to get together and like work on a project they want to work on, meet some people, have some nice food. Just people from different backgrounds? Yeah. You started off uh, your development life in a boot camp. I mean, what was your relationship with designers in that? I mean, have you, how and how have you adapted the way that you work? Um, I've had a lot of um, external de um, designers, like at my first job, which was a, a um, small startup. And it was very difficult working with designers when obviously they just give you a brief, they're gone as soon as they finished it, and then you're working along with like another member of the team to make sure things are up to spec. And it's been very, uh, very different working at um, my current job where a designer is like alongside you during the process. And it's so much smoother and it's like interesting to see how collaboration like so much like improves the process so much. I think a lot of developers like to think that once you have a design, then you can just build whatever the site is and you don't need any more input, but often that's not true. So you need to do more iterative stuff when like, you yeah. find that. I mean, do you do a lot of paired programming? Because I've seen, I've, I mean, I've never really had the chance to really do it myself because most places I've worked at, I've actually just written um, the front end code myself because it just, I've always just found it easier just to do it. And then maybe a developer will come in and help refactor things to make it much more performant or accessible or whatever. I mean, how have you actually worked directly with the designers then? Um, mostly on assets, I think, in our sort of um, assets and site design. So it would be like um, the way a response site should look, the way that it should look on desktop, that kind of stuff, as well as the assets that are needed for different um, viewports and stuff like that. Uh, in terms of the actual cycle and when you're actually working with a designer, how has that handoff process happened? I mean, do you um, start thinking about the ideas together, like a, like a sort of or sketching session, like on a whiteboard, or do they, like a brief is given, or the challenge, or whatever, that the thing that they're trying to create, and then they come back to you with a solution? I mean, how is that, how um, does the collaborative process work? 
it's collaborative three ways. So there's the cost, the customer, which in our case is the um, like salesperson or whoever is trying to make this new thing. They will go to the d designer. They'll work together to come up with a brief, and then they will all come up with the assets and designs. Then they'll come to us, and then when when that's decided, we can work backwards and forwards to make sure that it actually works with what is needed. Do you do uh, any design work yourself then, or is that not something you're not really interested yeah, in? I'm trying to learn, but it's difficult to find resources. So yeah. In resources in just how to design. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, that. I mean, I've been doing this almost twenty years now, and I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I think it's always going to be um, a never-ending story. So, I suppose just to wrap it up, uh, what are we saying? Uh, learning to code is just a matter of time. Yes. Uh, and there is ethical issues in the industry of protectionism. I mean, do you think, what, do you think there is any solution to, to smashing the school glass wall or just keep on trucking? To open up um, resources to people who aren't like necessarily very small children or like um, like people who are maybe of a more adult age, make more resources for them to do things for low cost. Like a lot of boot camps, my boot camp was free, but a lot of boot camps are very expensive and it's like another la la layer of gatekeeping again. So maybe it's a big, it's a big issue because obviously that would be like change the education system, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff that could be done. The only thing I really care about is the speed in which you can create a prototype, how you can show that intent, show a vision, I don't know, show an iteration on a feature or, or create something entirely new with minimal cost. 